Okay. So for the data in each table, tell whether y varies directly with x. If it does, write an equation for the direct variation equation, um, or for the direct variation. Well, we learned in class, we'll talk about it now, is that you can find the k value by, remember, since it's y equals kx, or solving for y by dividing both sides by x, and this, of course, cancels out, we get the k is going to be just equal to y divided by x. I switched the sides of them just so that it can have k first. So we can find the k value by dividing y divided by x. But if we repeatedly divide this y by its matching x, we should always get the same number, or it's not a direct variation equation. So use k is equal to y divided by x, and we need to repeatedly do that. So um, first we're going to say k could be equal to, what's the y value? 9 on that first set of values divided by the x value, negative 6. And when you do that, you get k is equal to 9 divided by negative 6, or dividing top and bottom by 3, 3 divided by negative 2, or negative 3 halves. Okay, this one results in negative 3 halves. So what about the second one? Well, let's erase what we just put in here. And try the next set of values. Next set of values, we do negative 1.5 divided by 1, and we get negative 1.5, which, fun fact, is the same as negative 3 over 2. These are the same, just written differently. Okay, let's try it one more time with the last one. And we're going to plug in I'll do it in right here so you can see it. Negative 12, negative 12 over 8. Negative 12 over 8, if we divide them both by 4, we get negative 3 over 2. So we're getting the same value each time, which is a good sign. That means that we're dealing with a direct variation situation. Okay? And... We get that out of there too. Since we always get negative 3 over 2, then the direct variation equation that we get for this one is y equals negative 3 over 2 x. Also could be written as y equals negative 1.5 x. Those are equivalent. Um, so then it says check your answer by plotting the points from the table and sketching the line. So we're going to plot those points. We're going to first have to indicate what our scale is. And um, when I'm looking at these numbers, I need to be able to go down to negative 12. So I'm going to make them go by twos. So let me just mark those off a second. Okay. So I've gone by twos. And now I'm going to plot all of these points. First, I'm going to plot negative 6, 9. It's right there, that blue dot. Then I'm going to plot 1, negative 1.5. Okay, uh, somewhere close to there, um, that little dot right there, it's three quarters of the way down, um, since I, everyone is two units and I'm going one and a half units down. And then I need to plot eight comma negative 12. And as you can see, they all fall in a line. I'm going to actually draw the line with my tool, and you'll see it running through them. So there you see it. Um, notice that this is a negative slope. It is as the x value increases, the y value decreases, okay? Um, you can see that here. You can see as this one is going up from negative to positive, this one's going down from positive to negative. So whenever you have one increasing as the other's decreasing, you're going to have a negative slope, which drops as you move to the right, okay? Um, now, problem number 29, we're going to do the same idea over here. And 
what we're going to do is we're going to then say, okay, if we need to divide y divided by x to find k, oops, k is equal to y divided by x, then k is going to be equal to, in this particular case, 1 divided by negative 2 for the first one, or k is equal to negative 1 half, negative 1 half. And for the second one, let me uh, erase that. We've got 6 divided by 3, which gives us 2. Oh, by the way, sorry, that was negative 1 half. But this one is 2. That works out to be 2. Already not going to work. That's not, um, that's not actually going to be a direct variation equation. And you'll find out later that this set of data points actually does all fall in a line. If you were going to plot that, it does fall in a line. The reason that's not direct variation is because it doesn't fall in a line that goes through the origin. And for all these direct variation equations, it has to go through the origin. It has to go through 0, comma 0 in order for it to be a direct variation situation. So there you go. Um, we're done. This one is not, 29 is not a direct variation equation. And so as you can see, it said, um, if it does represent direct variation, then do the rest of it. Okay, but it doesn't, so we can't do the rest of it. So um, does it vary directly with x? I guess what we should do is we should write down and we should say yes as our answer. And then plot the points, do the sketch the line. That's what we did there. Here, we're going to write no. And we can't do the rest. We can't graph it. We can't uh, connect it into the line. So we're done.